Nier Automata has been a game I've wanted to introduce my girlfriend to for a long time. I realized that showing it to her too early would be a mistake because she wouldn't be able to appreciate all of its nuances without playing other games first to see how it breaks from the norm. Automata does a wonderful job weaving all the gameplay elements into the diegesis of its world, and I wanted to make sure she'd realize the impact of this. Now, recently she's been playing through The Witcher 3, but it's been taking her ages to get through. Big shocker, I know. I'm a Witcher. So anyways, in between playing Witcher, she picked up Nier. My hope is that by having her play it, she'll think of this game as something more than just the one with the hot android women and cute robots. Besides, it's about time I made my girlfriend play Nier Automata. Who thought this was a good idea? Right out of the gates, Nier Automata gives you fair warning that it has expectations for you. What? Play the game to find out how to save? What the fuck? The entire prologue must be played without saving. And if you're like my girlfriend, you might be shocked to discover that you've already achieved one of the endings of the game by dying here. What? <laughs> oh my god. It took her half a dozen tries to get through this introduction, thanks to her not wanting to turn down the difficulty. Both of us were starting to go a little insane from hearing the intro cutscenes and dialogue, though. After learning there'd be more than one buzzsaw to fight, she finally dropped the difficulty and had much more fun. <gasps> I get to save! Part of what makes this game special is how well it integrates its game mechanics into its setting and plot. For instance, even things as simple as adjusting the volume and brightness are baked right into the game world. This totally caught her off guard and consequently became one of her favorite aspects of the game to talk about. Oh, I like this. I can't hear you. Oh, I can hear you! That's so cool! Things she's gotten comfortable with having in other games aren't just handed to you in Nier Automata. For example, it was a completely foreign concept to her that being able to see your health bar and minimap was something you could equip and unequip at your leisure. In fact, the first time she saw the plug-in chip in her face, I think her brain blew a fuse. Oh shit, okay, um... I don't know, just don't change it for now. I don't know that we've set her up with a game before where clicking the wrong thing on a menu could result in getting a game over, but that's exactly why I wanted to try other games first. I should've known. This game doesn't bluff. 2B is an iconic character, and I'm willing to bet that plenty of people who know of her don't even realize she's an android. My girlfriend was one of these people. For a long time, she only knew her as that one character that's always running around without pants on. <laughs> Aside from just being excited to play a badass woman, she was equally intrigued about learning who this mysterious character was. It didn't take her long to fall in love. I'm hot. Surprisingly, she really zeroed in on the high heels and just couldn't let it go. <laughs> Yo, look, there's extra boots in my room. I love the sound of her heels in this hallway. I can't get over it. She's running in heels, in sand, and now she's sliding. Just looking at those heels makes my feet hurt. I don't know why she's so hung up on this. It's not the first high-heeled, cybernetically enhanced character she's played as. And it probably won't be the last, to be honest. One ambitious thing that this game does is try to blend genres. After one of the first nights she played Nier, she told me it felt like she was playing a ton of games wrapped into one. The game ricochets between being a shoot-em-up and a hack-and-slash. It can really knock the wind out of you how quickly Automata will bounce between the two genres of gameplay. For her, I think she struggled to commit to one style over the other. You'd benefit the most by learning to weave between the two styles and find Find a way to be strong in both, but I totally get how sometimes it can feel like things are happening too fast. Just as you get used to one thing, the rules change and you gotta try not to let it throw you off your groove. Okay, um, oh my god. Ah! Every single fight in this game feels like a performance. In her words, it was as if the spectacle and presentation in Shadow of the Colossus met the adrenaline of the fighting in Metal Gear Rising. Even when she was getting pummeled mercilessly by a tough fight, the drama would just build up while the soundtrack was going wild. I don't think she was ever in as much danger as she thought she was, but that just goes to show how well this game sells you the experience. Okay, that's way cooler than what I was just doing. Sequences become so cinematic that she'd forget she was playing a game sometimes. There were lots of classic girlfriend moments like not realizing cutscenes had ended or thinking any minute a button prompt was going to pop up on screen. However, there are just as many occasions where she'd sit back in awe like she was watching a movie instead of playing a game. I caught her several times moving the camera around during NPC conversations like she was framing dialogue in a film. While the camera acts cinematic during gameplay, it's also a bit jarring to have control over it ripped away during moments of action. She really struggled to accept that her control over the camera wasn't necessarily guaranteed. Without warning, a Tom will switch from a traditional third-person view to a 2D side view before going top-down and then deciding he wants to go back. This camera changing is like throwing me for a loop. It was shocking to me as a first-time player when things abruptly switched, but I think my other experience with games made it a quick change in my brain for how things were going to work. For her, it really did take some adjusting and it wasn't always a smooth transition. Whoa, what's happening? 
Okay, I don't like that the camera just moves. There are a lot of options when it comes to the hacking and slashing. It's fun to experiment with different weapon types, light and heavy attack, but I think that her headache with the prologue scarred her a little bit. I say that because it seemed like her favorite method of fighting was just hanging back and using the pot. They're like not moving, they're just letting me shoot them. The tried and true method of staying out of reach with the right bumper taped down will certainly get the job done, albeit a little slow. I think I can understand where she was coming from because initially she was a little uncomfortable with the shmup mechanics, so it was hard to stop thinking of everything as some type of bullet hell. That being said, sometimes you just gotta be the baby bird and jump out of the nest. I'm going in. A notorious topic in our home was the infamous bubbles, which became a major source of angst for my girlfriend. Oh my god, they have bubbles too. You probably know them better as the bullets that the machines shoot at you. It was a bit of a sensory overload for her because of the chaos that they add to any fight. Pretty typical, especially during a boss fight, for the enemy to just start spitting these things out like crazy and filling the entire screen with giant purple balls of paint. Ah, there's so many bubbles! When you die in this game, you have to make a corpse run similar to what she's dealt with in Dark Souls. Although, what's more punishing is all of your plug-in chips are left on your body, and reclaiming them is pretty important. Of course, her classic maneuver wasn't to die before getting her body back, but to just forget about the body completely and lose her stuff. She'd also famously pick up another player's android body, thinking it belonged to her, and leave the more valuable one behind. It shouldn't take long to start picking up on some of the profound things the game is trying to do. The game wastes no breath dropping philosophy in your lap at every turn. My girlfriend's sympathy for the little machines is something I think we all felt at some point. Of course, she had a little help since the robots all have big round heads and she thought they were cute. As soon as she saw the ones carrying the balloons, she just wanted everyone to stop fighting and all be friends. What the hell? This has got to be one of the most bizarre games you've ever had me play. <laughs> Once she got going, she never really slowed back down, which is to say that after a while, she developed her method of dealing with most combat encounters. Possibly the biggest hurdle she faced while playing the game was when she almost soft-locked herself toward the end of it. What happened was, she went straight to the resistance camp after a mission in the factory without stocking up on heals from her previous fight. Taking out the machines in the camp was no sweat, but the real problem was that another Goliath was outside waiting for her. Not only was she out of recovery units, but anytime she tried to go and get more, she'd get ending L by mistake. I have to agree it was an odd choice considering an enemy will sell you recovery units after defeating the machine. Either way, it made for an unbelievably frustrating evening of hitting it with the pod from long range and spamming perfect dodges. Thankfully, all her struggles with it made the final fight a cakewalk by comparison. Oh shit. 9S, are you just gonna stand there and watch? God, what a dick. Ah! That was a lot of bubbles. Oh, fuck. I feel sincerely sorry for the people that got ending A and thought they were done with the game. Not because of how far they were from actually being done with it, but because they've missed out on what an amazing story was still yet to be. <laughs> It wouldn't be much of an exaggeration to say Nier Automata casually included an entire sequel hidden behind its second playthrough. This is the only game I know that's crazy enough to hide endings behind new game cycles while also spanning the entire alphabet. The endings F through Z are really more like funny game overs than actual endings, but A through E are the game's five main endings. Like most first timers, she thought she was done after completing Route A. Hysterically enough, she's gotten so used to the grading systems used in other games, she thought getting ending A meant she got the best ending of the game. It wasn't until a good portion into Route C that she she had a moment where she was like, did the game just start properly? This feels like a sequel, not a new game plus. Playing through Route B was something I wasn't too sure how she'd react to. Now, on the one hand, the game has you pretty invested in its characters by the time you unlock it, so it's not too hard to see why someone would want more. On the other hand, you just played through a lot of this, and although seeing 9S's perspective adds a lot to the experience, you can see why one might start feeling the itch to get to the new stuff. Additionally, and depending on the type of player you are, the hacking minigames can make or break things for you. I didn't mind them too much, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I preferred 2B action-packed combat if I was given the choice. I was a little worried my girlfriend would get frustrated with all the hacking, but she actually really liked that it let her focus on one thing at a time instead of both. No more getting her wires crossed and having to worry about her aim, jumps, shots, and swings while dodging the dreaded bubbles, I guess. Oh my god! There's so many bubbles! It was a pretty big revelation for her when she discovered an entire game was hiding behind the B storyline. This feels like a completely different game. I'm like playing Rock'em Sock'em Robots. This of course is when the story takes a major turn for the depressing and the bad stuff just keeps piling up. To be... We went through an emotional roller coaster during the last segment of the game and she was almost ready to stop playing. Oh!
After two main story playthroughs, it's hard to look back, but I'd argue that the payoff is worth the struggle. There are plenty of heavier moments at the end and lots of big decisions to make. <gasps> I have to choose? Oh my god! Yeah, I got Goey too. Is this like the final fight of the whole game? Um, kind of. Oh my god. It doesn't matter. None of this matters! 9x! If it doesn't. We're hacking. Shit, her hacking is complicated. Is, like weird perspective. There are so many fucking bubbles. <laughs> so after two incredibly sad endings, my girlfriend was looking at me as if to say, "Are you really gonna have me sit through these credits for a fourth time?" And the answer was yes. And I get the credits again <laughs> for the fourth time. <laughs> oh my god. Each time I'm like, yeah, they can't pull my heartstrings more, and then they fucking pull my heartstrings more. Report. Ooh. Unit black boxes now confirmed offline. Knowing that, do you still wish for them to survive? <gasps> yeah. <gasps> Ending E. Oh my god, the credits are bubbles! to player. Please respond to this query. Do you, faithful player, have anything you would like to say to other players who are suffering because they cannot finish near Automata? Sacrificing your save file is one of the most counterintuitive things she's ever encountered in a game thus far, so I was really curious if she'd be willing to let it go. You will lose <gasps> all of your save data. Do you still wish to rescue someone, a total stranger, in spite of this? My save file? You worked so hard to unlock debug mode and chapter select, but they will no longer be available to you. Do you still wish to help? Yeah. And so, we must say goodbye. I feel a slight amount of... sadness. Me too! It is time for the final words. Affirmative. To all of you who spent time with this game, thank, thank you. Thank you for playing. Part of why I waited to have her play this was because I wanted her to care about this decision. It's nice to see that the game had a profound enough impact on her that she was willing to play along. I played through the game three times and I have nothing to show for it. Except a cool title screen. <laughs> <laughs>